All right, now this next piece, compound interest. All right, we did simple interest. Now we're going to do compound interest. Now there's, there's one difference, main difference, and it's, it's the distinguishing characteristic. Now read the definition. Compound interest is interest paid on both the original principal, right? Now I know a simple interest is simply on the original principal. Compound interest is interest paid on both the original principal and on all interest that has been added to the original amount. So compound interest is interest on top of interest, right? Plus interest on top of the principal. Now, the formula, let's walk our way through this. All right, most financial calculators, they don't use, um, in some math texts, they, they use A's and P's and this. But most financial calculators, they'll, they'll have something that's called a future value, right? That's the amount you'll have in the future. Present value is, your, is, is what you would call your principal or your starting amount. R is your interest rate, all right? N is your compounding periods, okay? So let's walk our way through this. Uh, annually, if you have a word problem, and they've got to give you this. Annually is one time, particularly with compound interest. Semi-annually. N is two quarterly, like how many seasons are there? Four seasons, so that's four. Monthly, it's twelve. Daily, we're gonna go with three sixty-five. Okay, now some inst banking inst institutions use they don't they don't necessarily use three sixty-five. They they use a partial, so they might do three sixty-five point and one, two, or something like that, because they want to take into account leap years. Um, but for our purposes, when we see daily, we're going to use 365. All right, so first example. All right, so now we've got a formula, and I'm going to write the formula every single time. Uh, the biggest, don't make mistakes in terms of uh, substitution and then with calculators. All right, suppose you invest $15,000 at 12% interest compounded monthly. Um, what would your account balance be in, the, in 20 years? And that's 20 years from now, so we don't know. That's what we're trying to find, future value we don't know. We do know we have $15,000 today. All right, interest rate is 12%. Now you can go ahead and convert it to 0.12. Uh, time told us 20 years and it's got to be in years uh, compounding periods they said monthly so we know uh, we're going to say monthly so n is 12 alright so now the formula future value equals present value times one plus r divided by n raised to a power of n times t. All right, you've got everything you need, so let's step through this. We don't know future value, we're gonna leave that alone. We do have $15,000 today. One plus the interest rate is 0.12 divided by, we know compounding periods is 12. Close parentheses. Your exponent is 12 compound periods times 20 years. Close parentheses. Now, you need a scientific calculator. A cell phone will not help you here unless it's a scientific calculator app. Um, and you just type what you see, parentheses and all. So 15,000, open parentheses, 1 plus 0.12 divided by, or you can use a fraction key, divided by 12, close parentheses. Hit your exponent key, and, and it typically most calculators, uh, I'll write it calculators. If you don't know, it there's, that's an exponent key. It looks like a upside down V, okay? And some of them, they, they have uh, actual exponent key. So if you don't know, Whatever calculator you're using, go on Google, look it up, so you know what your exponent key looks like. And so I'm going to do 12 times 20 
and that balance in 20 years for this initial investment will be $163,388.30. Alright. Now, so you made a, a, a lot of interest simply by number one, playing a time game, all right, because the exponent and then your compounding periods. All right, so, but this is your future value. So that's how much will be in that account in 20 years, um, earning 12% compounded, compound interest on a monthly basis for 20 years. All right, so now same exact problem. Now suppose that you receive interest on a quarterly, quarterly basis. What is the new account balance? So we still don't know future value. Present value, still $15,000. Interest rate was still 12%, but you're not getting it monthly. You're getting the interest rate on a quarterly basis. Time is still 20 years. All right, this is quarterly. So N is four. All right, same formula, future value equals $15,000 times the sum of one plus the interest rate, which is 1.2 divided by four all right, all raised to a power of four times 20 years. All right, and the wrinkle is, only thing that's different is the four. Formula's the same, everything else is the same. The only thing that's different is compounding periods. So keep your formula that you just used, and you're gonna change your compounding periods to four. And the new balance will be $159,613.36. We'll round it to the nearest hundred since we're talking about money. All right, so when you look at those two answers, don't get caught just substituting uh, values and, and getting output. Make sure you look at what's actually happening. Notice you lost about, when you went to get interest on a quarterly basis, that's almost a $4,000, 4000 4, difference, okay, roughly, okay. So notice the more compounding periods, you have or you get, the more interest you earn. Um, so that's a, that's a fundamental principle that you have to understand about compound, compounding interest, particularly when it, as it relates to compounding periods. All right, and then this last example. All right, we have what's called the uh, same formula. There's just one little wrinkle. If we're trying to find out, uh, we, have, we want a future value and we want to figure out or we have a future value we want to figure out what we need to do today or invest today to have that future amount we're going to take the same formula and make one change so present value equals future value times one plus the interest rate divided by the compounding periods raised to a power of notice you've got this negative right negative n or compounding periods times times t. It's the only wrinkle. So let's look at the example. Um, how much do you need to deposit in an account now? Uh, so that's that means present value. So that's what we're looking for. To have $4,200 in 13 years. All right. Assume the account earns 1.9 interest compounded monthly. So we know it's compounded monthly. You know, time is 13 years. The interest rate 
is 1.9% or 0 0.019. All right. Substitute your values into the formula. We don't know what, what the present value is, but we do know we want $4,200 in 13 years. So you substitute all your values. Compound and monthly, so we know that's 12. Now be careful with this. Make sure... On your calculators, you insert a negative sign and do 12 times 13. All right, take your calculators, $4,200 times 1 plus 0 0.019 divided by 12 compounding periods raised to a negative 12. And just a, a note, make sure you use your negative sign on your calculators and not your minus sign, okay? Times 13 years. And we end up with, we need to deposit $3,281.43. Now, check the reasonableness of your answer, all right? If I'm depositing the money today to have more money in the future, this value should be less than the future value. So I know that's a good solution. Now, if it was, let's say I wasn't paying attention and I forgot that negative sign, you forget this negative sign and you don't put, your, put it in there and your formula, you're going to end up with $5,000, okay? or $5,375. That doesn't make sense because typically in savings account, and we don't know what this is, but let's say it's a savings account. Savings accounts typically don't lose money. So if it was greater than 4,200, that means you typically, you missed um, that negative sign. And that's how you apply compound interest formulas.